Morning, everyone. I hope you're well. I'm really pleased to be able to deliver this virtual assembly to you this morning during lockdown. It's definitely a first for me doing assembly like this, um, but hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Um, we're going to have a little look at the brain this morning and we're going to do some little activities to get us focused and help our concentration. Um, it's really, really good to see you all this morning. I know lockdown isn't easy for you and your families, but I just wanted to say how proud I am. and I know how proud all of the staff are of how you're coping with this. Um, I know lots of you are in contact with your tutor um, and your teachers. Some of you are doing some fantastic work. Um, it's really, really great to see how many of you are completing the work that your teachers are setting you. Um, so we just want to let you know that we're still here for you. We're missing you um, and we're really, really proud of you for how you're all coping with this. Um, so I'm going to move on to the assembly now. I'm going to start with a little few bits of housekeeping about your timetables for the week. And then we're going to go on to some fun activities about the brain. Just want to start the assembly by going through some general housekeeping. One of the first things I'd like to just remind you of is your timetables for the working week. I know previous assemblies have spoken about the importance of routines and one of the reasons we've come up with a timetable is to help you decide and focus on what subjects you should be prioritising on each day. Through the week you'll have opportunities to do all your core subjects and your option subjects. Each morning there'll be an opportunity to do a tutor activity, whether it be your PSHE, literacy, wellbeing task or some of the physical activities that Miss Everston has been uploading for you. The independent learning sessions can be used to catch up on any work that you've not been able to do during the working week. Now we've had a look at your timetables, just want to give you a quick reminder on how you should be accessing the work and how you can upload the work for your teachers to look at. You should all have been able to access your Google email through your username and password. Once you're into your school email, if you click on the nine dots in the top right hand corner, it allows you to select classroom. Once you've clicked on classroom, all the classes that you've been registered to led by your teachers should appear. It's in these classrooms that your teachers will be able to post work, communicate with you about what's expected, and for you to be able to upload your work so that they can have a look at it and give you feedback on what you've completed. The expectation is that work should take no more than 30 to 40 minutes per each subject. I must say I've been really, really impressed by all of your hard work and the work that you've been producing during lockdown. I know it's not easy at times, but some of you have made fantastic efforts and have sent us examples of work that you've completed, pictures and videos of the things that you've been doing at home whilst you're unable to come to school. On the school website, if you click on School Life at the top and then select Gallery, we've started to upload some of the pieces of work that we've been most impressed by. One of the most important things that I'd like you to ensure that you do this week is to have some kind of contact with your form tutor. All of your form tutors have been asked to make contact with you at least once a week, just to check you're okay, see if you have any questions, or if there's any way we can support you whilst you're working from home. Please can I make sure that you regularly check your Google Mail account and that you respond to any email that you've had from your tutor asking if you're okay. Some of you may remember earlier in the academic year before lockdown, I did an assembly to all the houses about the brain. The brain is something that really fascinates me and my assembly at the time was how we can make the most of our brain and make sure that things that we learn on a day-to-day -day basis move from our short-term memory and move to our long-term memory. This morning, I'm going to do in my assembly about the brain and how we can make sure we keep our brain active during lockdown. One of the first things I'd like you to try is the little activities on the short video. During the video, you're going to see some images. The images can be perceived in different ways and you can see different things in them. Depending on what you see, the video will give you information on what that means and the type of person you are, depending on what you see and spot in each picture. You might be familiar with the type of optical illusions that hide several images within one. But did you know that what you first see in such an image can speak volumes about your personality? 
Before you get to know yourself on a whole new level with the help of these optical illusions, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to join us on the bright side. Number one, what do you see first? A frog. Most people see a frog right away. If this is about you, then you have a straightforward personality. You try to be honest and direct with others no matter what. You're perceived as confident, trustworthy, and reliable. There are no hidden messages in your words, which is why people can trust your opinion and advice. A horse. Not so many people manage to spot a horse from the get-go. If you still can't see it, try tilting your head to the left. There you go. What a beauty, right? Those whose attention is first drawn to the horse are thoughtful individuals. If you're one of them, you have an analytical mind. You don't take things for what they seem to be. You have a critical approach to life and prefer to reach your own conclusions about a situation. Number two, what do you see first? Three bears. If the first thing that caught your eye was three big gray bears, you have an analytical way of thinking. You prefer a logical and stepwise approach to solving problems. You try to break an issue up into separate parts. This helps you understand the main problem and solve it efficiently. Mountains. If you saw mountains first and only then recognize that they look like bears, your style of thinking is intuitive. You often rely on your gut feeling and it rarely lets you down. You use your experience to solve problems fast and efficiently. You can notice common patterns in different situations and they help you figure out the necessary solutions. Number three, what did you see first? Two squirrels on a tree branch. In this picture, most people immediately notice a couple of squirrels sitting on a tree branch. These are the types of individuals who can see the big picture effortlessly. If you're one of them, your abilities help you correctly assess situations at first sight and thus solve subsequent problems efficiently. A woman's face. Very few people manage to see a woman's face at all, let alone notice it at first glance. If you still can't find the face, tilt your head to the left. One squirrel will turn into the woman's lips and the other into her eye. However, if the face was the first thing you saw in the picture, congrats! You're a unique individual with outstanding observational skills. This can help you in both your work and your social interactions with others. Number four, what did you see first? A man with a pair of binoculars. You're a person who prefers to concentrate on the big picture if the first thing you spotted in this image was a man holding a pair of binoculars. Several glances are enough for you to collect all the information you need. That's why you aren't a big fan of thorough analysis. A car. If you instantly saw a car, your coworkers and friends must appreciate your ability to notice fine details. You like when everything goes according to a detailed plan. At the same time, you may occasionally overanalyze things, which can prevent you from making quick decisions. The letter A. Are you one of the very few who noticed the letter A first of all? If so, then your strong intuition is enviable. On top of that, you're a person who always suggests creative ideas and non-standard solutions. Number five, what did you see first? Two faces. If the first thing you paid attention to was a couple looking at each other, then you're a romantic at heart. You really value the people in your life. Love and understanding mean a lot to you. Not to mention, you have a positive and friendly personality. Your inborn reasoning abilities can calm down even the most nervous or agitated people. A tree. If your attention was instantly drawn to a tree, you're the type who occasionally needs to be on their own. You love nature and solitude, but don't mind spending time with your loved ones as well. Besides, you're a tactful person who avoids hurting others' feelings by all means. Number six, what did you see first? A girl's face. If you're one of those who notice the face of a young woman, you're always aware of your surroundings. What's more, you see patterns around you, and this helps you draw the right conclusions and make correct assessments. Flowers. If you saw only flowers in this image, you probably really love nature. You appreciate the world around you, but also manage to get away from the everyday hustle and bustle when you need to. I hope you enjoyed that video. I found it really fascinating how depending on your personality, when the images are loaded, 
Some of us see different things. Some things are easily recognisable and some things you really have to look hard for before you realise they're there. Our brain helps us to coordinate actions and reactions. It allows us to think and feel and it enables us to have memories. This is how quickly your brain forgets things. You can see in the graph below, after 10 minutes of learning something, you can recall close to 100% of that information. But as the days and the weeks go by, slowly your brain forgets things. And that's why it's really important that you continue to recap things you've learned before, just as much as it is to learn new things. It's important that you treat your brain like a muscle. Like every other muscle, it needs exercise. This is why when we're at school and also during lockdown, we include PE as part of your timetable. As much as it's important to focus on your academic studies, it's also important that during each week you build in time to exercise regularly. Research shows that structured physical movement and testing our brain can enhance our readiness for learning. Physical movement increases the oxygen in the bloodstream and leads to improved concentration. Now it's time to get our brain working. Our first activity to get our brain working is how many F's. On the next slide, I'm going to give you a sentence and your one job is to count how many times the letter F appears in the sentence. On your marks, get set, go. Have you counted? There is actually six F's. Well, what could possibly go wrong? I think some of you will have only seen three. The reason why is you've probably read the word of so many times in your life that you process it as one unit, overlooking the second letter. Activity two is the color test. This is very simple. State the colour that you see. I'm going to give you a little tip. Only state the colour, just the colour. Ready? Let's have a practice. Although the letters spell out the word blue, the fact that the text is orange means that orange would be what you'd say out loud and is the correct answer. Are you ready? Well, wasn't that confusing? It wasn't very easy at all, but that's because your brain is working against itself. Your brain has a left hand side and a right hand side, and you are likely to make mistakes and errors as you absorb the information. Our next and final activity is the physical alphabet. Again, this will be about us using different parts of our brain and trying to get them to work together at the same time. In a moment, I'm going to read aloud the alphabet and you must complete the accompanying action. If you see an L, raise your left hand. If you see an R, raise your right hand. And if you see a T, raise both your arms together. Are you ready? I'll go slowly through the first time. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Did you manage to keep up?
and either put up your left hand, your right hand or both. Now we're going to go a little bit quicker just to see if your brain can process the information even quicker and you can keep up the actions. Are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Well done. That's not easy to both read the words letters on the screen and perform the right action depending on the letter that's in red. So, I've just got two more questions to see if you're really awake on this Monday morning. Answer the following questions. What do you put in a toaster? Yes, of course it's bread, but I bet some of you said toast. Now for our final challenge of this morning. Say silk five times. Now spell silk. What do cows drink? I hope you all said water and none of you said milk. Well, I hope you enjoyed the challenges this morning that I set you to try and test your brain and to get different parts of your brain working. If you've enjoyed some of the activities, why not try them with your family and friends? So, before I finish today's assembly, there are just a number of students who will be celebrating their birthday this week that I'd like to wish a very happy birthday to. So, Josh, Romany, Kira, Eva, Dan, Ellen, Scott, Ruby, Gabriella, Naomi, Dominique, Nikita, Freddie and Jaden. We hope you have a really happy birthday and you enjoy celebrating your big day. So, there we have it. There's the end of my assembly for the week. Hopefully the assembly has just reminded you of some of the things we still expect of you in terms of the work you're completing. Make sure, please, that you do have contact with your tutor this week. And hopefully some of the activities have put a smile on your face and hopefully they're things you can try with your family and friends later. Just want to say this final note. We are so proud of how you're coping with lockdown. It's not easy. We all have good days and we all have bad days, even as staff. Don't feel bad about having a bad day and enjoy the good days. We're still here for you. We can't wait to have you all back in school when the time is right. Um, and we look forward to seeing you soon.